what the hell is going on here? You can think of yourself both as the being that is giving birth and the being that is about to be birth. You are two in one. Our human mind is very rigid and it's also very resistant to new ideas. Likely someone who is struggling right now in various ways. You might be trying to figure out your purpose. You are waking up in the middle of the night having uh, anxiety or panic attack. Your nervous system is on overload. I mean, we do understand that we are waking up. We are becoming more spiritually aligned. But what does that really mean? <laughs> Remember to click the notification bell to get notifications when I upload new content. Thank you. See you soon. Hello, beautiful soul. Welcome to my channel. My name is Joanna. If this is your first time stopping by, thank you so much for being here. I hope you get something um, worthwhile from this transmission. And um, ultimately, my goal is to help you understand yourself so that you can make sense out of what the hell is going on here. Um, thank you so much for your time, for your energy. Um, if you choose to share this information, uh, if you like it, of course, um, I would be very grateful. My team and I would uh, love that if that's something that you uh, feel inclined to do. Um, just because the more people that have access to the, this information, I feel the better. So thank you so much for stopping by. Um, and I do hope you stay and come back. For those of you who are coming back, thank you so much for being here. As I always say, without you, I wouldn't be doing this. And I absolutely love what I do, though I am experiencing quite a bit of resistance right now. So um, I'm excited about this transmission and nervous at the same time, not because uh, there's anything bad. I never get anything bad from my team, but it feels like the information that's going to come through feels very substantial. Um, at the same time, I uh, have been experiencing an uptick in resistance. And to me, in my own process as Joanna, and I probably many of you go through the same process or at least a similar process. Whenever I, I've noticed that whenever I am about to um, graduate, if you will, from the old and enter the new, or to put it in the simpler words, whenever I feel like I am about to um, up level or level up, I will almost always experience a certain level of resistance. And this resistance to me feels like, um, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know whether what I am currently doing is making any difference. And what's the point of all of this? So these are some of the questions that have been going through my mind. And I've learned to accept the process, and I know it's part of the process of us waking up, but many of you are likely feeling this way. In fact, I know that's how you're feeling because I have contact with you. I communicate with some of you um, in person. And let's face it, we're struggling right now. Some people more than others, but if you landed on this video, is the, if this video caught your attention, then the energy is speaking directly to you, which tells, which informs me that you two are finding a bit of a struggle or finding yourself to be struggling a bit right now. And here's what I want to say to this. The struggle is a very important part of the process because it denotes some fundamental inner change. We are not quite sure what this change is about, though we might have some concepts of ideas, but internally, well, actually deep internally, our soul knows, but on a, on a human level, on a 3D logical conscious level, um, 
we may not know exactly what is going on. I mean, we do understand that we are waking up, we are becoming more spiritually aligned. But what does that really mean? As our human mind is very rigid and it's also very resistant to new ideas. So what you may be thinking of your purpose is and how it's supposed to look like in a 3D world. It's not so much that it's different from what your purpose is in the heart, but the way it's expressed may be different than the purpose you are logically thinking of. In other words, when many humans, and I would say at least most of the ones that I speak to, whenever people talk about what's my purpose, it is almost always aligned with the idea, what is it that I'm supposed to do? And here's the tricky part. It's not about the doing. It's all about the being. And then the doing happens as a result of the being. So when we are more heart connected, then we will do everything that is more heart connected. And you can't go wrong with your heart. With your mind, yeah, you can go wrong. You can assume things and they may not be what you assume, but your heart never lies. Your heart doesn't tell you stories. Your heart generally tells you the truth of what is. And um, many of us, I'm going to my, include myself in this basket, is, is, is uh, undergoing a massive shift. And this shift is a process, but it is by no means an easy process. So you are likely someone who is struggling right now in various ways. You might be trying to figure out your purpose. You might be uh, experiencing a lot of coincidences and trying to figure out what does this all mean. You are waking up in the middle of the night having uh, anxiety or panic attack. Your nervous system is on overload. You might not be sleeping very well or not sleeping at all and fully awake at night trying to figure out how to fall asleep. And of course, the more the head gets engaged, the harder it is to fall asleep. You might be experiencing some soreness in your body. You might be experiencing twitching in your muscles. You might be experiencing eyesight change or changes in your eyesight. There is, you might be, thank you, you might be experiencing a lot of extra heat in the body or I'm getting the word convulsion. And that's a strong word actually. What do you mean by convulsion? shakes. You might be experiencing shakes in the body. And none of these things are bad, but they can and often do feel alarming. And when we are alarmed by what is happening uh, in our bodies or within ourselves, we try to figure out the reason for it. What's going on with me? And of course, I am not here to give anyone medical guidance. So when I say, nothing is wrong. I'm not suggesting there might not be something that you should look at with a medical doctor. I'm not saying that. But for most of you who are experiencing these symptoms that I've mentioned, and there's many, many more, um, specifically shakes in the body, they're saying to me. So if you are experiencing shakes in the body, that can be very alarming because like, the hell is, why is my body shaking? What's going on? And for those of you who are experiencing these shakes in the body or twitches in the body, it's uh, although it is alarming because it certainly deviates from our norm, it is essentially your body being charged with extra energy and your body working really hard trying to adapt to this new energy. And what I mean by energy is just uptick in frequency. We are all frequency based. That's what we're made of. And we all vibrate on a certain level. And that level, if you will, that f vibrational frequency is changing. Uh, in fact, I know you know this, otherwise you wouldn't be here. This information would make absolutely no sense to you. So if you've got something going on with your body, if you can't sleep and all the other symptoms that I've mentioned, 
aside from checking yourself out and making sure there is nothing going on, which I would always suggest that you do first. But once you do that and eliminate all physical and medical possibilities, then I would invite you to just accept this as part of you being a human and going through a natural process of what we call awakening. Awakening simply may, means you awakening to all the possibilities that exist outside of your normal understanding of yourself at this time. That's what awakening really is, according to my team. And what it simply means is not only shift of vibration, but what it really, shift of vibration really means shift of awareness, shift of consciousness. Humans' consciousness is on the rise. Now, we might look at the state of the world and say, uh, no, actually what's happening is the opposite. Well, it's not that the opposite is happening, is that Part of this process is what's inevitable chaos. Chaos is part of the process. In order for the old to be no longer, it needs to tumble down, it needs to crumble down. And there's a lot of resistance that's felt within that process. Hence why, thank you, I am experiencing resistance. You are likely experiencing resistance. Your resistance might look like I have no idea what to do with myself. If this is the sort of question that you are asking, I would gently suggest do nothing and just breathe through it. When your muscles are tensed and you are very tensed, you will notice that your breathing is much shallower. The deeper we breathe, the more our body relaxes because we are bringing more oxygen into the body. Okay, so the more you relax, the more we relax, the more we are able to handle whatever is going on a little bit better. And if you're going through the process of awakening, there is no turning back. The analogy that was given to me this morning was quite beautiful. They actually said that we are in a gestation period. So gestation, when baby is being formed, it's the it's the space between birth and uh, insemination and, and um, when the baby is first conceived. And the space in between is, well, it's a space. So we are in this, uh, um, I want to say the word enclave. I don't even know what that means. I'm going to have to look that up. We're in this enclave right now and if you imagine a baby in mother's womb it's 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 safe but it's kind of tight but we're not ready to come out yet so that's from the baby's perspective from the mother's perspective for those of you who have given birth you will likely understand what i'm about to say when you're getting to the very end of the gestation period you're spent, you're tired, you're bloated, you're irritated, you're, um, but you're excited at the same time. You know, your life is about to change massively. You can kind of sort of conceive it, but you really don't know what that's gonna look like until it happens. So there's a natural tendency to be <gasps> a little bit um, uh, trepidatious. And um, there was something else I wrote. Um, you might also uh, have fear if you're a, 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 a female who's about to give birth. You might have some fears around the pain associated with birth because let's face it, giving birth is generally not a walk in the park. It's not a walk in the park for the mother and it's not a walk in the park for the baby. So. You can think of yourself both as the being that is giving birth and the being that is about to be birth. You are two in one. And when you couple this with what's going on energetically, we are bombarded, if you will, with all these extra frequencies that's causing a lot of disturbance, both internally and externally. 
then that you know that makes up the 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 feeling of what the heck is going on it it makes us feel unstable it makes us feel uh, agitated it makes us feel scared it makes us question what is going on what am i here to do what am i to do with myself and if you are asking these questions right now i would gently support you by saying don't do anything just breathe and of course if you've ever given birth or even if you haven't you probably know this that one of the things that's being taught to women i think it's called la maze la maze class if i'm not mistaken because i didn't take it um one of the biggest things that's being taught in these classes pre-birth classes is proper breathing because proper breathing can get you through anything when i say proper i mean breathing that is helpful to the body in order to release a certain level of resistance fear and i'm even saying the word cortisol okay so it it changes the level of cortisol in the body i actually don't know if that's true i'm going to look up that later but um proper breathing is very important it makes the process easier so i would say to you just breathe and that's easier said than done i completely understand this i am human too after all and I have given birth, so I, I know what it's like, um, except with a baby, you have, you know, approximately nine months, the baby's born, and then you continue on your journey. But for some of us, this doesn't feel like nine months. For some of you, it feels like it's been years. And that's a long run at something. That's a very long run. So it only makes sense that many of you are feeling tired. Uh, life is dr drudgery, drudgery you are feeling confined within yourself maybe in your life even and maybe you're in a situation when you feel like feel like you are stuck and you have no idea how to go around it or why in fact do, why do i why do i feel stuck so one of the things that was shared with me when i said what's what's going on with humanity right now at least for those of you who are listening because I always ask for information to reach specific individuals who are meant to hear this. The word I got was bewilderment. So even though I understand logically what bewilderment means, I looked it up and sure enough, it's a being, it's a feeling of perplexed or confusion, being perplexed or confused. So is that you? Are you feeling perplexed or confused? Welcome to my world. <laughs> I want to assure you that many of us feel the same way. And in fact, you are not alone in this, but it is a process like I mentioned earlier, and this process um, cannot be stopped. There is, there is no going back. In fact, one of the main reasons why you chosen to be born into this planet at this particular time is so that you could go through the process to help raise vibration on planet Earth. You are in essence a uh, light warrior, if you will, that has taken upon him or herself to bring more light into this world. And in order to bring more light into this world, you have to be able to hold this light within your cells, within your body. And what happens when we start to hold more light within our bodies, all the heaviness has to drop away. So we are very much in a process of dropping our density. We've talked about this before, but I just wanted to affirm that if you're going through uh, something like the dark, dark night of the soul, if you're going through um, you know, a phase of depression, if you're going through a total lack of wanting to do anything or even engage with in life, I want to assure you that what is happening is uh, imagine that you are uh, climbing a very steep, steep mountain and it's been a long, arduous journey. And, you know, here's the mount, here's the top. You started here and you're just about here. You're just about reach, ready to reach the top. 
but you're so tired, you're so exhausted, you have no energy, you're like, frick, what the hell is this for? That you might not be thinking about the peak that you're about to reach, which is in this context, you reaching a new dimension. But it's not a dimension outside of you. You're not going any, anywhere. It's a dimension that is within you. It This dimension resides within you already. You are just not in the frequency of that dimension yet. Because it's all happening internally. Right? And then it's externalized into the world. So you might very well be experiencing the dark night of the soul. You might actually be, and I hope it's none of you, but I know some of you, personally I know that, um, are questioning, um, why am I here? Do I wanna be here? What's what's this point of me being here? What is it, wh why bother? Um, what I do wanna say is this, if you didn't want to bother, you wouldn't be here. And I'm gonna say the next, phrase with a bit of a humor, not because this is funny by any stretch of the imagination, but because I want to make light of the situation a little bit, because it raises our vibration. You chose to be bothered by being here on planet Earth. Now I know many of you listening to this, especially if you're going through a dark period, I know I guarantee it that you're not saying to yourself oh i chose this okay that's easy no you're not doing that you're saying what the f is going on i did not choose this hell why am i being punished and this is very difficult because if you feel this way i nobody can deny how you feel it's how you feel what you feel is your truth but here's what I want to say to you. There's no one or nothing out there that's punishing you. That's That would mean that there is some higher authority deeming something about you that you have to suffer because of that. That's, that's not how it works. That's not how things exist. In fact, because of your own inner demolishment of old limited structures, you feel like you are being punished, but you're not, you're far from being punished. What is actually happening? You are in, you are in the process of freeing yourself. Hear me, you're not being punished. You are in a process of freeing yourself from karma, old karma. Most of you listening to this are resolving lifetimes and lifetimes of limitations you have held within your DNA, lifetimes. And I'm gonna say it again, even though some of you may get irritated, and I know I would too, I have been irritated when this was stated to me years ago before I had an, uh, an understanding, a different understanding. You are choosing on, a, on some deeper level to release yourself from old karma, from old limitations, from old ways of looking at things, from old ways of seeking things, for old way, from old ways of looking at yourself first and foremost and most importantly. So you are far from being punished. You are being freed. You are in the process of freeing yourself. But you know the saying, freedom comes at a price in order to experience that freedom that most people yearn for, inner freedom. We have to be able to let go of what we have been stuck on all this time. And that is effectively called ego dissolution. So if you are hearing this, you are likely going through what I'm being asked to state as ego dissolution. You are in this solution of your own, uh, um, what's the word please? I, I, um, of your own delusions, delusions, illusions, illusionment. 
you are in the process of freeing yourself from your own illusionments, if that's even a word. In other words, illusion is something you believe that something is when it is not. So you believe yourself to be as a certain identity, but that identity, that identity has a hold on your being and what you do in life, but that identity is just a concept. You are a walking concept. That's who you are. In fact, you, that's not who you are, sorry. You're not a concept. You are identifying yourself as a concept, but your identity is built up from a whole bunch of concepts that you believe is you. That's the illusionment. That's the illusion. Because to identify yourself as a concept means you have to put limits around you, you have to put parameters around you, okay? As a soul, well, that's not who you are. But for the purpose of having an experience in a physical body, this is the process we go through. It's, it's we, we have an identity, we have an identity to identify with in a certain way in order to have experiences through that illusion or through the help of that illusion. And we see the world in a certain way and we see ourselves a certain way because of this illusion. However, going back to the idea of punishment, you know, being punished, although it feels that way, certainly can feel that way, you are actually in the process of freeing yourself. And that is, if not one of, then if not the hardest, then one of the hardest things you will ever do. It is um, not an easy process. Why? Because your entire existence as you know it, which is where your safety and security rests on, begins to crumble. Does that mean that you're gonna have no safety and security? No, it's your idea of safety and security is fundamentally changing. Letting go of the old ideas in or in favor of new is in many ways reshaping our inner structure that for most people is what makes us feel safe. And when you're between two worlds, which is the analogy they would like me to use. When you're between two worlds, you're not in this old world anymore. You're not in this new world per se. You're in this space in between. And this space in between feels like it has no grounding. There is nothing to land on. And this is the space in between. That's the frequency uptake. uptake. That's where the frequency is. You are in a, you are in effectively being recalibrated right now, okay? Frequency wise. And that's going to affect your thoughts, your moods, your emotions. And certainly it's going to affect how safe you feel in this world. So if you're not feeling safe right now in this world, it isn't necessarily because of something that's going on outside of you. In fact, your life may not have changed at all. Everything is fine. But for some reason, you're feeling this confusion and often when we are confused we we don't feel safe so what i want to say is this and i would like to encourage all of you know that first and foremost here's what they want me to say know without a shadow of the doubt and doubt is the tricky part that you are worth so much more than the credit you give yourself let me repeat. You are so much more than the credit you give yourself. And they say, you believe you can't do something? Try it. Many of us believe we can't do something. And because of the idea of I can't, which is based on our belief system, we won't. And because we won't, we won't know any different. So we'll just keep being stuck in the old world that says on some level, I can't, which is a limitation. And oftentimes it's not about I can't. Oftentimes it's more about I'm not willing to try. Why? Because I'm afraid. Some of you are maybe afraid of trying something new. 
Perhaps you're afraid of trying on your belief system because you're afraid that if you do, you're going to be rejected. Your biggest supporter is you, always will be. And of course, you want others to support you, otherwise it feels very lonely. But if you are not in your own support of yourself, then that is when things get really hard. So one of the questions you might be asking yourself is, am I in and my, in my own support of me, how do I support me versus how do I neglect me? And we all go through this. It's a natural, you know, human tendency to neglect some of the things that, you know, that, that we don't want to deal with. But this is not time to neglect our emotional needs. Now, what just came to me is I need to say, if you're feeling sad, going out and spending money you don't have or going out drinking or going out partying in order to forget what's going on inside of you is not going to change what's going on inside of you it's going to momentarily help you forget but here's the thing that is the opposite of what we want to do because that's what we have been doing all this time we have been forgetting who we are you don't want to forget you want to remember. We are all in a process effectively of remembering who we are. Do you remember who you are? Do you remember where you come from? Likely the answer is no. That's okay. It's part of the human experience. We are born here under the veil of forgetfulness in order to have an identity to identify with, to make us believe we are that identity. But then at a certain point, we are deciding collectively to shift that, to go and experience life beyond our limited identity because we are so much more than our identity. So here's what I wanna to say to you. Whatever you have been limiting yourself by whatever you have been saying to yourself i'm not this i'm not that i'm i'm not enough you're none of that you're none of it you're none of it so if you're none of that then what are you you are an embodied potential that's who you are. You are spark of the divine. Some call it God. I choose to use the word source or consciousness. You are an extension of source. And source is unlimited. Source, by its very nature, is unlimited. You being extension of source are what? You are an unlimited being. You just don't remember that. So this process that we are all going through of dismantling our illusions of believing that we are an identity. We are in the process of realizing that we are so much more than that. And that is very crushing to the ego. The first time I had an awareness, and this wasn't a cognitive thought, it was embodied awareness. It was energy, pure frequency. When I first had the first had the awareness of what is consciousness or quote-unquote God, it was one of the most terrifying things in my entire life. Even though I logically, cognitively had an idea, a concept in my human mind, what that means, I had absolutely zero idea what it meant in my body. And when I experienced that, it was probably the most profound moment in my life coupled with having my son, but also at the same time, it was equally as terrifying. Why was it terrifying? Because my ego just went literally dropped to the ground, complete dismantling in a second. And I remember saying, actually it was probably screaming, Oh my God, this changes everything. Oh my God, this changes everything. Oh my God, I couldn't stop saying the words, Oh my God, this changes everything. I remember 
that for a while after, everything in life just didn't seem the same. And then eventually I came back to my normal human awareness and, you know, got back to the 3D because to be in this other awareness in, in that frequency, I don't believe I would be able to function. There's something else I want to share with you, which to the logical mind is preposterous. It doesn't make any sense. When I was in one of those moments, I remember distinctly having a bodily awareness, not logic, bodily awareness, essence, frequency of realizing that everything in my life, including the chaos, was absolutely perfect. Here's the kicker. I also in that moment, in that awareness, knew with every ounce of my being that I could change anything I want at any moment. And here's the even bigger kicker. I didn't want to. Now, for an average person who hasn't had that experience, hearing, you mean you had the awareness that you could change anything in your life and you didn't do it? I effectively call that the biggest bullshit there is. As a, strictly as a human being, I would agree, but not in that awareness. Here's why I'm saying this to you. If you are struggling, you are struggling because of the story that you are attached to. But remember, you are more than a story. You are struggling because you are going through a dismantling process so that you can embody the space that I was in. So that you can experience more of you in this life, in this human life. Will you still be a human? Yes. But you'll be more of a supercharged human. You figure out what the idea of supercharged human means to you and if you would like that. But even if you don't like it, even if you wouldn't want it, you're here going through the process. There's no going back. We're all magicians in disguise. We all have inherent wisdom deep within us. We may not always have an understanding or access to this wisdom. Pardon me wrong choice of words. We may not always be conscious of having access to this wisdom or what this wisdom is about, but there is an inherent deep, deep, deep knowledge and wisdom within each and every one of us. And the more we let go of our identity, the more we can access this deep wisdom have you ever talked to somebody who was very wise and their wisdom was coupled with humility where they will not boast for, oh, look how wise I am because that's ego. Being around someone like that feels like laying down on a downy pillow. It's very soft, it's very comfortable and it's just very pleasant. Imagine being surrounded by people like that. I would say the world would be very different. And we are in the process of creating this difference right now. And it starts with you. And it starts with myself. And it starts with your neighbor or your friend. Your neighbor or your friend may not be aware of what's going on with you. They may not even be consciously aware that they too are going through this process because their belief systems may be different. That's okay. If you're on planet Earth, you're going through this process, like it or not. The reason why it might be a little bit more harder for you, and I suspect it is, is because you are conscious of this. You're conscious of this, yet there is nothing that you can see. There is seemingly nothing you can do about it. But yes, you can. You can breathe through it as best as you can and remind yourself 
I am going through a very challenging and very difficult process. I am in essence being birthed. I am in essence giving birth to myself. So it's a double whammy. And the process of birth, as I mentioned earlier, is not an easy process by any stretch of the imagination. It is, in many accounts, hard, arduous, scary, and there is no turning back. So what I want to say is this. My team wants me to say this to you specifically. We commend you for having the faith, the trust, and the grit to go through the process, even though many times all you would ever want to do is just run away. Know that you are worth it and the process is worth whatever it is on the other side of this process. And I'm being asked to say this again, you are being commanded, commanded, command, I command, we command you, you are, what's another word for command? Uh, commanded. You are being um, commanded. Oh, it's not coming up. Um, you're being blessed, you're being supported. Kudos to you, in other words. Because if there's one thing that I know as Joanna and I work with many of you um, individually, choosing, consciously choosing to do spiritual work in order to ignite the inner spark within us, in order to help others ignite their inner spark, it's not an easy fit, feat. It's not an easy feat by any stretch of the imagination. So I as Joanna command you, command you, command you. I give you praise. I am giving you praise for your willingness to go through the process. And if some of you say, no, I wasn't willing to go through it, on some level you're willing, your soul is willing. You may not have the awareness of remembering that, but you absolutely are. And I feel for some of you, it's what makes it so difficult because you're saying to yourself, well, if, if it's up to me, why am I struggling? Because this, struggle is part of the process just like the birth discomfort is part of birth some have it super easy but it generally is not the case generally there is some challenge and sometimes there's complications you might be going through your own complications right now in your life your personal life, your the structure of your life, your your support system might be dismantling. You might actually be pushing people away because you realize that that's you don't need them anymore. For whatever reason, they don't serve you anymore, and that changes your world. And for a while there, it might feel empty. And there is the analogy of restoring a house. When we are in a process of restoration, things can get pretty ugly. Things are being taken down, a whole bunch of trash has to go out. And basically we have to clean out the inside or the outside to prepare for the new. Because if we put the new on the old, it's going to get too cluttered, even more cluttered than before. And it's just not going to feel good. It's gonna be more of a mess. So I want you to uh, think of yourself as a beautiful house, which is also a symbol for safety and security for me, that's going through uh, a, a, a pretty big transformation. And through this process of transformation, you are also realizing some of your biggest inner conflicts, how you have been conflicted with yourself, how you have been rejecting yourself how you have been unloving to your very self. And if you are not in support of you, you're going to have a very hard time believing that someone else is in support of you. Heck, if there's no other people in support of you based on your situation, you at least have to have you being support of you because otherwise that gets really hard. So be kind to yourself, be loving to yourself. 
go easy on yourself, take a bath, have a massage, go for a walk, smell flowers, breathe, do anything in order to help your body relax a little bit more so that you can embody more of this energy that you are being imbued with because that's essentially what's going on, okay? And of course, if any of you are wanting to um, you wanting me or anybody else to hold your hand, I can certainly do that. Uh, it's, it's always my honor that information is done below. And there's other people. Ask for help. If you are in need of help, ask for help. Most importantly, ask the universe for help. Universe, I need help. I need help with this. And then see what the universe provides to you. They may provide to you certain information like this. They may put a person in front of you that is unique and has certain talents and abilities that seem to fit with exactly where you're at right now. And maybe that's the correct person for you. It could show up as, um, as a metaphor for you to try something that you haven't thought about before, to read a book, to open your heart. Most importantly, ask the universe for help. And if there's one thing that I know even when I'm going through my own challenges, as many of you are going through your challenges, the universe never fails me, never. I may not get things the way I want, but because that's my ego, my ego wants that. But at the end of the day, I, my ego doesn't know what's best for me. It thinks it does, but it doesn't. Most of the time it doesn't. We, most of us don't really know what's best for us. We have these assumptions based on our limited understanding of who we are, but our soul knows what we need. The universe knows what you need. Your guides, your angels, your team knows what you need. And if you can't trust them, which is sometimes hard to do, then that makes it a little bit more difficult. So connecting with your inner guidance, connecting with outer guidance, if you will, from other beings to other planetary systems requires you to tune within and trust and when you're going through a difficult process sometimes it's hard to trust so I would just say just do your best perhaps help have someone help you trust or at least have someone to help you understand what's going on give you some suggestions so that you at least don't feel alone because you're not alone in this I promise you you are not alone in this though it certainly can seem that way so i hope this message was helpful i will do another um video with some cards to tell us specifically what's going on uh, but that will follow a few days later thank you so much for being here i look forward to seeing your comments and please do comment i want to see where you're at and um always remember this fundamental truth you are always enough. You don't need to change you at all. In fact, you are perfection. What needs changing is the way you see you, the way you think of you, the way you identify with you. That's what's changing right now. All my best to you and all my love. Take care. Remember to click the notification bell to get notifications when I upload new content. Thank you. See you soon.